Welcome back. We're so glad that you're here with us. You could have been anywhere else in the world, but you're here with us. And that's a good thing. It's the football podcast from We Play Strong. It's only getting better and better. We're chopping it up with some of yours and mine favorite footballers. This episode, the one where we should get back to the kitchen, we talk about sexism against women, online trolling, and supporting mental health. Please join the conversation by using hashtag WePlayStrong and be sure to subscribe to the football podcast. And of course, leave us a review. You know how it works. So I feel pretty cool to be the host of this podcast and to be in the online presence of these amazing women. Back with us is the one and only style icon in women's football, playing for Wolfsburg and for my home country, the Netherlands, Shanice van der Sande. Hello, guys. Our special guest is from France, represents Le Bleu and plays in England for West Ham United. <laughs> She loves football. But she's also a huge sneaker lover, just like Shanice and me. Welcome, Ken Sadali. Hi, guys. We're surrounded by social media, can't live with or without it. And it seems like no one is safe from the world of online trolling. And women's football attracts its fair share of it. And I know it's not only online. I've experienced my fair share of offline bullying when I grew up. So let's get into the conversation. What's the most ridiculous thing you've ever heard about the women's game? Because, I mean, we know that there are some ridiculous things that people are saying. So, yeah, I have heard that people said, yeah, maybe the girls need to play in a, in a skirt because in the tennis, oh, yeah. they do the same. I said, <laughs> this is so stupid. Yeah, I, you know, sometimes it's so crazy how people think. And that makes me kind of mad, for sure, because, you know, why do we need to wear a skirt in, in football? Because, you know, when we make um, a sliding, sliding I, yeah. yeah, a sliding, you see my whole underwear. Like, <laughs> do you? Well, that, no, well, but that's what they want. <laughs> yeah, that's what they want. And that's yeah, what, exactly. Yeah, that's what exactly. makes me angry as well. It, they always, in the beginning, they always spoke about, oh, that girl, she has a nice, <laughs> oh, yeah, that <laughs> like coming out of the T-shirt. Like just watch it, look at our football, you know. And that's oh, I I hate these comments from the men's. Yeah, I, I think it's do. getting better for sure. It's getting better, but this was yeah days ago. No, so shut up. You know what I mean? And then, the, <laughs> yeah, but I yeah. I just yeah, but I just stopped that conversation and I show them that they make me yeah. angry and frustrating because yeah, I'm done with these uh, comments. You know, when you read things like this, you just want to say. Let's play 1v1. Yeah. <laughs> I swear. <laughs> I swear. That's all the time my reaction. I want to comment. Hey, do you think we can play 1v1 one day? Are you free for one? Yeah, come on. You know? They will never <sighs> give a comment back. And for you, Kenta? <laughs> I mean, it's like, I, I, so many. Like, of course, go back in the kitchen. Everyone oh, knows yeah, yeah, this yeah. one. Like, it's... Uh, So like so easy to say it for 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 men it's like this go back to the kitchen like and uh, and about her goalkeeper to be honest I heard so many things and I was so happy that the last World Cup mm -hmm. we got so much um, so many good goalkeeper you know and like everyone was like oh they can play in the big goals like they don't need mini goals and I'm like like they always say yeah your goalkeeper can't jump. Mm -hmm. um, they're so bad or things like this. I'm, I'm like, we don't need mini goals. Like, it's the same football, it's the same sports, it's the same rules. What are you talking about when you say, like, we need mini goals? Yeah, it's because hard goal people are not good enough. Like, I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's actually it's the most ridiculous. We have things. an episode about this, uh, about yeah, this topic about <laughs> goalkeepers with Sari van Veenendaal. So make sure to check that one out as well if you're uh, if you have if you've missed that one. Um, but uh, where did you where have you seen these comments or where did you hear these comments? Do you remember that? L last time, like yeah, yeah, yeah. Last time I, I I heard this, it was like during the World Cup, like. I used to do some things with being sports mm. and uh, there's some commentators, you know, so famous in the, in football things. They say, yeah, I think 
uh, women's football needs mini goals. And I'm like, you're supposed to know football so well. That's your yeah. job. And you can say comments like this. Like, are you watching the same game as me? Or oh my, yeah. Like, like for example, the the goalkeeper from your national team. Like, mm -hmm. she's amazing. Yeah. yeah. Just go to training with her, and you're gonna see if she needs mini goals or not. You know. Yeah, exactly. Like, and go back into the kitchen is every comments. Like, you know, last time we play last camp with national team, we play Mac Macedonia, mm -hmm. and uh, we won 11 uh, zero. And you see, like, so many comments. What well, is not sports? It's not football. It's ping pong. Uh, mm -hmm. Go back to the kitchen. Uh, um, you can't represent her country. Like, there is no national team in France. Things like this, you know. I'm like, yeah. mm -mm. still, that's crazy. Yeah, still. My experience was 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 totally different um, because I also played in a boys team. But they mm -hmm. didn't have my back. So, for example, um, in my smaller community, I was playing with boys. They knew me and they knew like, okay, Rocky is killing it so she can play with us. But then I uh, joined the local club and um, mm -hmm. also, also always had to play in the second team because the coach said we don't want to play. Uh, we don't want to have girls in the first uh, team. So, um, or I wasn't good enough. That could also be the, <laughs> the problem. But I, mean. uh, I remember uh, playing with these boys and I didn't feel safe because uh, it was a thing where they were like um, bullying me around, but then also having to play against boys, they were also bullying me around and the people around the field. So I remember this time mm -hmm. playing a game and uh, I, of course, was the only girl on the pitch. I was the right winger. I scored three goals in the first half. It's a hat trick. It's 3-0. And I walk off the pitch and one of the fathers of the other team comes up to me and he says to me, hey, they say that you're a girl, but I don't believe that. Pull down your pants and show it to me. And I was oh. 14 years old. And I... So to me, my memories of playing with boys was, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, it's good for your like your performance wise, but I didn't feel mm -hmm. safe at all. But I'm so happy that there uh, I've heard more uh, stories of, of, of women yeah, playing with sure. boys. That's what what's so important. So that if you are a girl that is you can be vulnerable in this environment of only boys but then uh if you have that safe space where they support you then of course it makes it way easier to uh to yeah, play sure. in that environment yeah but maybe also your coach was like he put you in a second team maybe he was scared for the reactions of other clubs you know what i mean like mm -hmm. maybe other trusting you but he was scared for the reaction from yeah from the world or from the other teams other coaches you know you know how it works in this world Yeah, so could maybe be. he had that confident in you, but yeah, you don't know because yeah, yeah in this time we we'll never figured that out. No, but no, it's, uh, no, but yeah, 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 yeah. But this yeah, happens quite crazy. a lot. That people, yeah, they believe in the women's football, and they will tell you now because now the women's football is like in the elevator, and we're going to the top and top. So people want to, yeah, want to be friends with us, and you know, in general with the women's football. But still, yeah, it's crazy. Oh, people yeah, just. Just react. Yeah, it's like it was the opposite for me. Like when we play away, mm -hmm. I got my locker room for me, just like referees, you know, when mm -hmm. they come, they got their own locker room. And my I have a coach, like he always tried to to put me in the best condition all the time to protect me from all the boys and things like this. I was lucky to be honest. Yeah, but that's great to hear. Talking about online trolling, I mean social media is popular. You You girls have a big following. So, um, Shanice, do you ever have to like deal with comments on social media, on your Instagram, for example? Yeah, for sure. But the, first of all, I really like to use social media because we have, you know, we have a big platform. So we ne really need to use it in the women's football. But yeah, I got so many crazy comments, but also really good ones. So I just want to speak about that as well. I got like great comments. But also, yeah, stupid comments. And yeah, during the World Cup, it was really bad because my performance weren't good enough. And I know that, but it was crazy, the comments I just got from people. First of all, they said like, yeah, yeah, you are a man, so you can play. Are you not like a sister of Memphis or, you know, stuff like that? Or they say, yeah, you just focus on your football because why do you have a different hair color? Uh, you are not focused on the World Cup. You can't kick any ball. Uh, 
that they curse a lot, that it makes me, yeah, it hurt me. For sure, that hurted me in the, at that moment. And, and do you also have to deal with that offline? For example, when you're like on the streets or do you sometimes get, uh, yeah, you know, um, not so nice comments? Mm -hmm. No, not at all. But I can tell you that when I came back from France after the World Cup, that I was really scared to go outside because I got all these comments on Instagram. So I was like, okay, so what happened if I walk down the streets? Should they come up to me and then scream to me or say something bad? So for sure, I was really scared for that, but it didn't happen. So I'm glad. Hey, and Kenza, how was that for you, uh, social media-wise? Uh, I mean, you had to deal with a, a serious injury. Um, can you explain a bit about that? Yeah, Chinese was there. Like, my my worst years was, like, when I was at Lyon, obviously. Like, I signed for Lyon in August after really, really good years uh, with Paris. And uh, we got national team, and I just had a really, really big injury with my knee. And like at this moment, you got some PSG fan because we were allowed to move at Lyon at this moment. Mm -hmm. So they were so angry against us. Like you go to Lyon for money and things like this. And um, after it was about my injury, like, you know, when, when you, you injured, you struggle already, you know, like so hard because you don't have mm -hmm. the most beautiful things in your life, you know. So you already struggle. And when you, like, for example, this year um, with the team, we won the Champions League. Shanice was there <laughs> with uh, her fantastic assist. And, um, and so I post a, a, a picture of me with a trophy, with the trophy of Champions League. And I got so many comments like, you just only here uh, to post picture with the trophy. You didn't mm -hmm. even play one game. Um, you get money from this trophy or from the team, so much money in Lyon, but you don't even bring something to this team. Yeah. You never play. You're always injured. You're a weak player. Uh, or things like, your knee is over. You're not going to play anymore. So much bad comments yeah. about, about me and, and, and my injury. So you already struggle less so much when you know you have pain every day. You spend all your day at the training ground because when you're not injured, you got training, you got some a bit extra, but after you're at, you're at home. Yeah. But when you're injured, yeah, you you got treatment, you got training, you got everything. You spend all your day, and people don't see this. No. And they just go on your Instagram or things like this and say you do nothing. You just get your money. You post with your trophy that you don't even deserve it. And that's it, you know. And you're like, come one day with me, spend one week with me, and mm -hmm. you're going to see if I'm doing nothing, you know. So, yeah, it, like, you already struggle when you're injured. But af after when people say things like this, you're like, it affects you so much, you know. Yeah, people are very, um, yeah, just very how did you say insensitive for that as well, where they just mm -hmm. put that out there and on you. And you're also still a human being going through things in life. And then uh, on top of that, you're injured. Um, yeah. It, it's very sad to hear that. Um, but but, but um, how did you deal with it, Kenza? Uh, like, to be honest, it was really hard. Like um, I was a bit lucky that when I get this injury, it was mm -hmm. at Lyon. So I got my family around me and sometimes I got my grandma and she was like, listen, like it's a period of your life. And uh, so it's going to be better day, 100%. So mm -hmm. keep going, keep going. So sometimes you try to switch off with your family. I can't imagine myself in this situation in England, for example. No. But like, so the good things in this, in this way was like, I was at Lyon and after six, seven months, I was like, you can't let people affect you. No. They don't know no, you. I... Um, if you, if they affect you a lot, like they're happy, they're looking for it. So mm -hmm. don't let people, don't give the, them this credit to affect you a lot. So mm -hmm. I was like, okay, I delete my account. So I was like, I wasn't on Instagram during two or four months. I was like, I don't need it. I mm -hmm. keep my distance from this. And I tried to switch off with all comments, all things like this. Mm -hmm. Try to focus on my recovery and, and that's it. But it's, it's sad that you have to delay your account yeah. of things like this because of people like this. Mm -hmm. And you know why like the most funny things is this, is like these people, when they see you, 
around the training ground yeah. or in the city, they ask you for a picture. Mm, yeah, yeah, I know it's the right. I swear, like, <laughs> that's the funny thing. So you always criticize me a lot. And when you see me, you ask me for a picture. That's so easy, you know? Yeah. yeah so easy. Speaking about that criticism that you received uh, during the World Cup, um, how did you deal with that? I mean, it was the first time for you. It was the first time for the whole squad. Um, yeah. And you were in the middle of that World Cup. And I mean, you um, how, did, how did you um, deal with that? Uh, first of all, for sure, I needed maybe almost one year to recover from all of this because I felt so sad. I was like almost depressed, stuff like that. But during the World Cup, I didn't want to show my team that, I mean, everyone saw that I wasn't in, in, in the tournament. I wasn't my best in the, during the tournament. Everyone knew that, but I didn't spoke about it with my teammates because I wanted them to focus on the World Cup because we were in a good mood or we were in a flow, still in a flow with the team. Even I wasn't there in a flow, the rest of the team was there. Like Lynette Berestein came on, she brought some different energy. And of course, it's hard to see that because you want to be there. You want to stay there. You want to make a difference. But she made a difference. And that is what brought us to the final, that we are a team. And that, you know, even if I wasn't there, that I said to Lynette, hey, Lynn, we really need you this tournament. Come on, be ready for the next game as well. And I think you need that in a team. And I'm so glad that I was still positive to my teammates. But when I got to my hotel room, I was so sad and I was really down i didn't spoke with the teammates and normally i'm the one that make jokes who laughs all the time you know and this didn't happen so last time i think last international break uh, we had a meeting with some girls and then we spoke about like yeah shan i thought you changed a little bit after the world cup or during the world cup like what happened and just last month i told them like yeah i was like almost depressed and it was so hard for me but I, Yeah, I didn't want to speak about it with you guys because I didn't want to let you down or give you negative energy. And then they said, oh, it's crazy that you felt like this and we couldn't help you in the, at that moment. I said, it's all right. Otherwise, we maybe never will play the final against USA if, you know, if I shared my feelings with you. And then they said, yeah, that's true. But, you know, our whole life changes and my life as well. Like in the last couple of years, the last three years, in Holland, everywhere where I go, people want pictures, everyone recognize me. Doesn't matter if I wear a cap or anything. So yeah, that was quite tough because I wasn't happy and I had to deal with a lot of myself from the inside that I still had to give the people the energy when they asked me for a picture or if they said, yeah, how are you? It was great at during the World Cup, like reaching the final. And I was like, yeah, it was great, but I felt so <laughs> during this World Cup. I don't want to speak about it for now. So yeah, it was quite tough, but it made me stronger. And for sure, I'm still dealing with some stuff, but I'm happier and, you know, I, I'm back on the pitch and I want to give everything. I want to reach my goals, want to win trophies. But yeah, I have my mental coach for that. I speak with him if I have a bad day. But yeah, it's not nothing. Like Kenza said, the comments you get, it's sometimes, yeah, you know, you are human. So you are feeling, so you feel it when people, yeah, bring, try to bring you down. Yeah, I think, Shanice, you have this, like, unique fire inside of you where, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, you, you're always glowing, but then also still you're a human and then um, you have to do with all of these comments. And do, do you think that um, these comments had an effect on your performance? Yeah, for sure. Because the first game was all right, wasn't our best game against um, New Zealand. But then I got some comments already and I thought, okay, no, I'm not gonna, going to look at the comments, but some girls, they showed me something or people sent you on WhatsApp, look what is in the newspapers, stuff like this. And I didn't even want to see it. And then the next game, I felt already that I wasn't myself because I was thinking about the comments like, okay, I get the ball now. And people said, yeah, you can't even cross a ball or kick a ball. And then at my first cross I had in the game, I heard already the comments in my head and I felt already, okay, it's going, yeah, bad. I need mm -hmm. to focus on myself. But it was so difficult, so difficult that, yeah, in, in the end of the tournament, Serena had to change me. I had a conversation with her as well about it. And I said, yeah, it's better. You need to, you need to bring someone else on the pitch. I can't bring what you ex expect for me to bring. So, yeah, it's, it's hard to speak about it, but I really good conversations with Arjan and with Sarina. So that, that was okay. 
Yeah, it yeah. feels like you already uh, like that you very, that you grew from it as well. And like you said, you mm -hmm. have a mental coach that, that you speak with, and uh, you recently also spoke about it with your uh, with your other teammates. Mm -hmm. Kenza, does this sound familiar to you? The year of the World Cup, like obviously, it was in France, so everyone watched France playing, and uh, you got so much pressure, you know. But like pressure, you have to deal with it. Mm -hmm. That's the part of the job, you know. But like when you start to begin personal and it's always your name, people go on your social media mm -hmm. to say you shit. like you don't deserve to play in this team or this is better than you. This player is better than you. I don't know why you are in, on the 23 player in this. Things like this, you know, like, yeah, it, it's still uh, at pressure on you and that you have to deal with it. Mm -hmm. And um If you don't, like, as a person, as a football player, you're unhappy and it doesn't work like this. Yeah, it's a lot of <laughs> that you have to deal with. Uh, mm -hmm. but what do you, why do you still continue to play? It's just passion, you know, like, personally, I can't imagine myself um, without football. And, like, at least, like, they just, at the end of the day, they just haters. Uh, behind mm -hmm. your keyboard so you just have to understand it you you mm -hmm. can't leave let people affect you because if you open the door to this then you're done mm -hmm. like so I tr it's really you have to work on yourself it's not an easy deal but you have to work on yourself and that's what I I did you know and like I built my personality thanks to this person at least Because now I'm stronger and um, and I don't open the door like to say, yeah, you can affect me. I protect mm -hmm. myself. I play my game. But yeah, it was really hard. Like um, it's a long work. It's a long process to accept it. And, and, yeah. and why do you think women's football is so targeted and affected with this online bullying? You were also just saying like when you lose or when you win a game with 10-0, then it's like it's ping pong. It's not real football and all of these other comments. Why do you think women's football is is that target for, for so many online bullying? Because like they refuse to see that the the game has grown, you yeah, know, sure. like they, they really don't accept it. Like, I don't know why. Like, I mean, if I don't like something, I don't watch it. For example, exactly. I don't like rugby. I don't watch rugby because I don't like it. Yeah. So it's, it's simple as that, you know, mm -hmm. like if you don't like it, don't watch it, you know. And uh, I don't know, like it's so easy to attack women's football to say go back to the kitchen or things like this. Um, they just want to accept it or, or get used to that you have women's football on your TV. Yeah. And, um, and I also think we just need to continue the way of playing what we show the world because France, they always have a great squad. Holland is, you know, we are the European champion. Yeah, we, we played the World Cup final. We need to continue these things and people will, yeah, be quiet. And you always have some people speaking about it, but I don't care about it anymore. So we spoke about some of the mental health issues that you have to deal with. Shanice, you even have a mental coach that you speak with. Kenzo, do you have uh, a mental coach or somebody that you talk, uh, that you speak to about this? Yeah, uh, I mean, uh, in the staff, we got one. So she works with Olympic athletes. So she's a part of the staff. We got like work collectively and the uh, individual work you know so i was there with her yesterday <laughs> yeah, okay uh, we got That's meeting cool. like one hour per week uh, if you want to speak with her you can if you don't like you just have to be a part when it's collectively work so it's a new things you know like in sports in general everyone got uh in their staff like a mental coach uh, even in national team before the world cup we got one To, to deal with this, like to deal with your struggles. And I mean, it's really a good idea. Like it can really help you. Like um, yesterday I was with her and, and, and she's really open. She, the door is we all the time open to someone to say, hey, listen, I'm struggling at this moment. So yeah. I just want to talk to you. And, and that's really good. Like that's really good. As revealed in a Fifth Pro uh, study that you can check out online, uh, the study found 38% of active professional players in 2015, 38% reported symptoms of depression 
Or in other words, as many as nine footballers in a 25-person squad could be experiencing symptoms of common mental disorders such as distress, anxiety, or depression. I mean, that's, that's crazy. crazy, right? That's a lot. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. What, what do you think about that? As a professional footballer, like you don't want to say to people, I'm struggle. It's mm. hard to say it. Uh, but obviously, like we're human, so we can be in difficulty, you know. Uh, I'm not surprised about about this, like because, like for example, when I start football, I have to go in academy, and I was depressed. It was like it was at Lyon. You can say, "Wow, what a beautiful life!" You got school, you got training, um, you in the best club in the world. That's amazing. You you're so lucky. But at least you're far from your family. Uh, you have to make sacrifice. Um, it's really hard. Like every night, I was. I was really depressed. Like I cry a lot and I was like, what I'm doing here? Mm -hmm. It's not for me. Like I need my family around me. I need my friends. And it was a big, big rhythm. You go at school, you got training. Um, you have to do your homework and it's every day, day in, day out like this. You have to work out at school. You have to work out on the beach. So um, I was really like, it was a big, big change for me because I get used to, to be in my comfort zone, mm -hmm. you know, with my friends, with my family. And when you have to sign like shyness on me and when you have to leave your country, uh, get out of your comfort zone with another language, without mm -hmm. your family, without your friends, it's a big deal. Like it's really, really a big deal. Um, before when I was in France and I had a bad day, I take my car, I go in my family. When you in another country, you have to deal by yourself. So yeah, you got depressed, you got anxiety but because you got a lot of, of big games, so you have to manage the pressure, you have mm -hmm. to be all the time at 100%. So it's not easy, it's really not easy. Yeah, yeah, and, and I mean, what role does your team and coach play in having that stable mindset? Because you're far away from home, uh, Shanice, for mm -hmm. you, uh, the same. Uh, how important yeah. is, that, yeah. is it that you feel right at home in your team? I mean, when I played in Liverpool, the team was like young, so you are more friends. And then when I left Liverpool, when I went to Lyon, you see that the team isn't like friends, you know? You just have to be 100% on the pitch. And sometimes you have like one or two, two people you are close with. So I had Kadisha Buchanan. And when uh, Kenza was in my team, I was close with Kenza as well. But yeah, sometimes you can't uh, say that the coach or your team has to be important to you because you have to deal with yourself. And this is, in the men's football, they can bring their own family because they have the money to bring everyone there. But here, our our boyfriend or our girlfriend has to work in, a, in their own country because we don't have that money to help them and to come with us. So, yeah, it is for sure the coach and the team are important, but at some way you just have to do it yourself. Because in Lyon, it was so different compared to Liverpool that, yeah... You can't, you, can't, you can't think like, okay, I'm going to sign for Lyon and I hope the team will be there for me and the coach will be there for me. No, yeah, they will be there for you, but just on the pitch and not when you leave the, the club. When you go to your house, you are alone. Yeah, yeah, no, I totally understand. the same understand. here in Wolfsburg. Being far away from home, having to deal with all of these comments. I mean, how do you mm -hmm. take care of your mindset and your mental health? Uh, personally, like, I switch off. Like, I can't believe that a professional football player can be all the time on football. It's impossible. You're being crazy. You have to switch off with your loved one, with your family. Just say, okay, there's time for football, but it's time for myself as well, you know? So um, I learned from my experience to say, before when I was younger, I was like football, 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 football. But it doesn't work like this. You have to switch off. Sometimes, so I try to take care of my mindset like this. I switch off. I need to see my family. I'm lucky because I understand Chinese because obviously I come from Lyon. I know Lyon so well. And when you sign for Lyon, you know it's going to be competitive. You know you're here for football. Everyone is here training to play. So um, you got 23 international players. So yes, you have friends in the team, but like it's competition. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. Like at the training, it's not teammate. It's you 
and yourself, you know. Yeah. So you can have friends in your team, but you have to deal by yourself. And people don't understand this. Like when you're at home in another country, you're alone. Yeah. And and that's it, you know. Mm-hmm. So how important is it to speak up about, about these themes, about mental health, online trolling? I think it's really important because everyone has problems with mental health, you know. And if you don't speak about it, people think it doesn't happen. So they are scared to speak about it. And that is why in the men's football at the moment, since this month, in Holland, they speak about it more. And you see in the media that people said, oh, it's good that Gregory van der Wiel speaks about it. It's good that Ricardo Kishna speaks about it. And I think in a women's football as well, we, we just need to speak more about it. And sometimes you don't really have to speak about it in the media, but just sometimes if you have a teammate to speak to, just tell her so she get comfortable with it as well if she doesn't feel, you know, if, if she doesn't feel like comfortable in the team. Because you will always help 1% if you share your your memories and your your story. Shanice, what would you tell your younger self looking back to everything that you've learned? Um, if I want to speak to my younger self now, I will tell her that I'm really proud of her, that I'm a stronger... I mean, when I was younger, I never believed in myself. And I always uh, wrote things down when I was uh, when I was hurt or something like that. And I will never think that I will grieve that much at what I did now till the day today. Like I won the Champions League three tri- three times in a row. Um, yeah, I am the European champion. I played the World Cup final. I play now for other big club, Wolfsburg, and I want to win trophies here. So yeah, if I look back to my youngest self, I will just tell her, never stop believing in yourself and you know help other people around you because that's how I am. I like to help people around me. I like to give them a comfortable feeling because if you can help some people in some way, just do that, you know. You make the world a little bit a nice place. I love this question because when you ask this, I'm like, I can imagine myself before and I'm like, wow, now we're old, you know. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, No, if I have to say one thing, it's like, if I have to meet her, my young one right now, I'm just going to say it's going to be really, really hard per moment, like really hard. You're going to go through some um, really hard things in your life. So it's not going to be easy, but it was it at the end because you're going to live such amazing experience to be a professional player. Um, you're going to share so many emotions with your teammates, with your team, with your club. Uh, you're going to travel uh, and just open your mind and things like this. So just keep going. It's not an easy way. Um, it's not an easy job, to, let's be honest, but it's worth it at the end. You're lucky to live. You're going to live your passion. It's going to be your job. So just keep going, even in the dark moment. Just keep going. Wow, that's amazing. It's time for a game, and we're going to play She Said What? I've got four famous quotes in football, and you have to guess who it's from. Just shout the name if you know who it is. Oh. <laughs> All right? Are you ready, okay. Stevie? Right? I've got four of them. <laughs> okay. So, the first quote, it's... It's wanting more. It's training more. It's taking more care of yourself. It's being Marta. ready. <laughs> <laughs> hey, wait. How you can know this? She's in uh, Portuguese when she says it. Eu, eu, yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> eu falo Portuguese. I don't have eu, the... Eu, eu posso falar Portuguese, so... <laughs> But I translate ah, it for yeah, you. Yeah. That's cheating. <laughs> <laughs> it is, it is. <laughs> <laughs> okay, going into the next one. So if you hear, if you know it, Kenza, just say the name. Okay. I think she's going to be better than me, but no, no, let's no, go. No, 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 no. Don't be like that. <laughs> you got this. Okay, so when you get world-class investment, you get world-class results. Football federations Mega are you listening. No, it's, uh, it's, it's a player that you... She say Rapino? It's, no, it's <gasps> a player that you... Wait, wait, wait. You both play with her. Wendy Renard. When you get world class investment, oh, no, no, you get world class results. Football federations, are you listening? Alex Morgan. You you both played with her in the same team. 
Uh, Lucy Brons. Oh, no, 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 Ada. Ada. Ada, <laughs> of course. Ada. Ada, you are yes. right. <laughs> Okay, you can Okay. Two. okay. It's one, one. one, one. Like if it's about federation, it's Ada. Exactly. One, one. Ne- sec- second one. Okay, be quick. We have pink hair and purple hair. We have tattoos and dreadlocks. We've got white Megan, girls Megan. and black. Latino. Yeah, exactly. Megan. Who was first? Latino. Yeah, Megan. Pink hair. It's easy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you both. So you've got Megan, you've got Rapino. So okay, the last one is gonna be <laughs> the one that's gonna, you know, make okay. make sure who's gonna win. Okay, so be okay, be ready. My coach said I ran like a girl. I said if he could run a little faster, he could too. Alex Morgan. I know this. My coach said I ran like a girl. I said if he could run a little faster, he could too. She, Alex Morgan. Well, she is American. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Carly Lloyd. She's not playing anymore. Oh, she's a um, legend. Went back. Further back. She's like the biggest the player. Back. The, one of the biggest players. Like the biggest one. The legend. The all-time legend. Smith. <laughs> not when. Her last name is... is, is uh, uh, no, Meath. no, wait, wait, wait. Me? No more. Uh, hello. <laughs> Can I Google? No, no. <laughs> Can I use Google? Well, yeah, why not? There? Wait, who was that? But, uh, how old is she? Is she? Yeah, went back. With... Jambon. Her last name is with Jambon, but then in English? Um. Oh, yes. Jambon. I know her. <laughs> she played for Lyon a bit of her. Miam! Yes! Oh, Miam! Yes. Yeah, Miam! Yeah. <laughs> Jambon, <laughs> Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah, I know. Wow. Okay, but it's not our generation, but we no. got it. It's a wrap. We have come to the end of this episode. Trolling and abuse to women in football is still a serious topic, and we need to continue this conversation. Unfortunately, the trolling and abuse is still a common factor we have to deal with. But by sharing, by speaking up, and by coming together, we can try to make it go away. Make sure to join the conversation by using hashtag WePlayStrong, subscribe, comment, and share. Let us know what you think of our podcast. And while you're at it, tell all of your friends to come and check us out. Thanks for listening. Stay tuned for the next episode. Major thank you for Shanice and Kensa for coming out and for having this conversation with us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.